How you doing, folks? This is Rex from the Buckeye Nest. Pretty awesome day today. It's a Sunday afternoon. October 23rd. The year of our Lord, 2016. What makes it so awesome is this. You let me put my feet back on the floor today. Let me come down here into the City Park Englewood. This is a pretty awesome park. Contemplate a little bit. So I'm down here doing another edition of from a veteran's point of view. You've all heard me do this video stuff before. But I recently did an email that I guess caused some stir over at Trotwood Madison High School. Specifically with the Army JROTC program there. Master Sergeant Newsom told me that he read my email to the students and it caused some consternation, a little little thought process. It uh, might have fraggled some brains, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but given that thought, that prompted this video because I told the Master Sergeant I'd be glad to come back over there someday and if the, any of the students wanted to ask me questions about that email, they could. So I thought I'd enhance that email a little bit with this video. First, I think I need to tell you how I got involved with the Army JROTC program over there. And it was pretty simple. I was over at uh, Office Depot one afternoon and I saw this guy running through there. He Well, he wasn't running, but let's just say he was marching at a fast pace. Had his arms full of paperwork and he was wearing an Army uniform. And of course, I always stop and, and chat with veterans uh, of any age, rank, uh, when I see them. And if they're Vietnam veterans, I welcome them home because most of you know we didn't get a warm welcome home during that day and time. But I stopped this gentleman and when he turned around, I realized he was an Army major. I almost snapped to attention and saluted when he did that, but I didn't. So he and I chatted a few minutes, and he, I found out that his name was Odell Graves. He was retired Army major, and he had just picked up some stuff related to a Sergeant Brooks that was killed in Iraq, and that he was going to be doing a uh, memorial. Center memorial ceremony and a street dedication for over in Dayton, near the Dayton VA. So we must have chatted maybe 20 minutes. And I was so impressed with his enthusiasm about what he was doing with the Army JROTC program at Trotwood Madison. I asked him if I could come over and visit, maybe break my camera. And that's how it all got started. To this day and at this very moment, I consider retired Army Major Odell Graves a friend of mine. See, that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about wisdom. I want to talk about intelligence. I want to talk about Mr. Kaepernick. Now, I just said I just said his name, Kaepernick. So everybody's ears is going forward like this. Because they want to know what an old fart's got to say about Mr. Kaepernick. Well, you're right. If you thought about it, I'm going to talk about his kneeling and not pledging allegiance, not covering his heart. So, how does wisdom and intelligence come into this? Well, it's pretty simple. The older you get, like me, I'm an old fart, the wiser you get. Wisdom comes from age. You gain wisdom the older you get. And it's, some people call it street smarts. Some people call it common sense. Whatever you want to call it, it is wisdom. And you gain that through age. You learn from doing right from wrong. That's how you gain wisdom. 
You'll never get wiser until you get older. So a lot of you young people, and I call you young adults, especially at the Army JROTC program, may, may, may not even grasp that idea or that thought process. That's one of the things that kind of holds you back as youngsters. I hear a lot of young people say, well, I'm depressed, I'm held back, I can't do it, I can't get the pay that that 60-year-old man's getting. He needs to retire, so I can take his job and get his pay. Well, I, I got news for you. It doesn't matter who the 60-year-old is. If they retire, I can promise you it's not going to be a, a young whippersnapper, 20, 21, 22, get his job because they're not wise enough. They're not wise enough, and that's what holds people back. And I hear more complaints from young people saying, well, the old people is holding me back. Well, that's not the case. Now, let's talk about intelligence a minute. You learn intelligence from book smarts. You go to school, you're going to school now. You get intelligent about certain things. You become smarter or intelligent about art. You become smarter or, or intelligent about history. Maybe you major in business. You become smarter or intelligent about how to run a business. You become smarter Anybody can be intelligent. Yeah, the young people coming up nowadays know more about computers than I do, and I've been working with the material parts since 1984. But I get my uh, wires crossed and thought processes crossed sometimes. So I got to go to my young nephew, who's he's a computer guy. He's in his mid 30s. And he usually helps me out with some things. So he's smarter than me in some areas, but he'll never be wiser. I said wisdom comes from age. Now, I have made a public statement that Mr. Kaepernick, when he dropped to one knee, he refused to say the Pledge of Allegiance or the National Anthem or whatever it is he was supposed to do. He's got that right to do that. It's pretty tough for me to, to uh, comment on that sometimes, but he's got that right to do that. I served in the United States Army myself from 1972 to 1975. And when I took that oath, I, I took the oath to uh, protect the Constitution, freedom of speech, uh, the Second Amendment, the right to carry weapons, all kinds of things when I took Now my, my beef with him is this. he did it the wrong way and he did it at the wrong time. There's such a thing called respect. And if he'd put a little more forethought into that, respect issue.
he may not have done it the way he did it, and he may have thought about a different way to do it. But because he did what he did, a lot of people talk about our society's falling apart. Well, I'm going to tell you, you can take this to the bank, because one of these days I'm going to die, I won't be around to maybe or maybe not to see it happen. But what Mr. Kaepernick did is, is he did irreparable, unrepairable damage to our society when he did that. How do you say, how, how did he do that, Rex? He was only standing up for his rights. He was only standing up for Black Lives Matter. Well, you may be right, but what he should have done is he should have said something to the whole wide world before he did it and then uh, announced it and did what he did. But he didn't do it that way. And because he didn't do it that way, I see the trickle-down effect every place I go nowadays. I've been out to Trotwood Madison High School recording football games. I see those young football players out there stepping out of line, dropping to one knee and raising the black power face to the side. They can do that. They're allowed to do that. But I gotta ask myself, and I gotta ask them someday, maybe do they really know why they're doing it and what they're doing it for? They're doing it because a man who makes $19 million a year playing with a ball and who was their idol dropped to one knee and they thought, it because they are young people, not nowhere near as wise as I am, or Major Graves, or the President of the United States, or anybody else, they thought it was cool. Now, that might have been able to be fixed had Mr. Kaepernick realized the error of his ways and not retracted why he was doing it, but how he did it, and make a public statement and allow the NFL to allow him to do a public statement about what he did. But to my knowledge, that's never happened. But it's irreparable now because I see the real little kids, the wee wee football players doing it. What's sad about all of it is, is it reminds me of the 1960s when racial issues were really, really high. Martin Luther King died. I had a lot of respect for that man. One of our greatest presidents, Mr. Kennedy, died. Both of them shot and killed. But it's reminded me of all that back from that day. And Mr. Kaepernick, what he did is going to cause some of that issues again. Because some young person is going to get out there and not really realize why they're, what they're doing is what, the reason they're doing is what they're doing. Because they're just going to remember, well, Mr. Kaepernick did it. He's a quarterback in the NFL. You've got to remember, though, Mr. Kaepernick is not oppressed. Kaepernick makes $19 million a year to play with the ball. Most of you will never get to do that in your entire life. But you're going to idolize that man until the day you die, probably. Or when you get wiser and older enough and wiser to realize what he did was seriously wrong. What he did was cause irreparable damage to our society. So, given that thought, folks, 
I pray that in some way, shape, or form, you young people watching this might get my message. Once again, I don't condone the way Mr. Kaepernick did it, but he had the right to do that. So I'm back now with some more thoughts about Mr. Colin Kaepernick and his way of doing things. Let's put our brain matter together. That's what you it's underneath the hat here, the skull, the tissue that holds it in there, the bone, our brain. Let's put that to together. Let's put some thought into what could Mr. Kaepernick have done other than what he did to have as much of an impact on the point he was trying to make in a positive way instead of in a negative way. <clears throat> well, you've heard me say that Mr. Kaepernick makes 19 million bucks a year to play with a ball. Yep, he gets to play with a ball and he makes $19 million a year. So, I wonder if he thought about the fact that every time somebody raises their fist in a protest, they're going to be saying to themselves, I can do this because my buddy Colin did it and he was standing up for Black Lives Matter. Way back in the day, there was a group of people that called themselves the Black Panthers. They used that black fist, and it meant black power back in that day. Of course, I was a young man. I had joined the Army at a very young age. I learned at a young age that there is no racial difference. It's just the color of the skin. When we get cut, we all bleed red. We're all part of the human race. We live in a country called America that claims it's free. And it's free because of people standing up and doing things, what they think is right, wrong, or indifferent. When I took that oath, I agreed to protect Mr. Kaepernick's rights but I don't condone the way he did it so why don't he take some of that 19 million dollars he makes and invest it in the neighborhoods that got tore apart by the Black Lives Matter group invest it back in those businesses and those people's homes that are homeless and those business people that are out of business and have done it for so long that they really don't even know how to start life over again. Take out some ads in the local newspapers. Talk about the issue in those newspapers. Take out some ads in the, in the local publications, the small-time publications. Talk about the issue in those. Help rebuild those neighborhoods, invest some money into that, actually go down and buy material and take it to the neighborhoods yourself, colon, and let those people use it and have it that they need it to put back their businesses and their homes with. Then you call together groups of young kids and you talk to them about what Black Lives Matter really means, not what it means to these people that are hired and brought in from other states, other countries, or, or they just have such a negative feeling about the United States of America that sometimes they don't even need to be paid. They just come into an area that's rich and ready to be torn apart through racial issues. Torn apart, and then they fade off into black. Funny, as I said they fade into black, huh? Because they fade off, you'll never see them again. But these are professional 
riot starters, protesters. Maybe some of them even pulled the trigger. Wouldn't surprise me when I worked South Central Los Angeles. I ended up in a little town called Riverside, California. I took over an apartment complex there my, uh, to help secure it, make it a safer place to live when people moved in there. My very first night on duty, I came across seven individuals that was bringing a shooter. This was a kid that was in a gang to Riverside to hide out in the apartment up on the third floor because they just shot and killed some people in Los Angeles. My head, my hair was standing up on the back of my neck, frankly, because I was in there by myself. Let's just say they got my point. Okay? But that's the kind of stuff that you're going to have to deal with now, Colin. You're going to have to deal with those types of individuals and the thoughts that they that you have caused the thought that you have caused those kinds of problems by standing up kneeling and not saying the pledge of allegiance to the flag or co covering your heart when the national anthem is played All the kids nowadays, Colin, my last thought is, is all these kids nowadays, they look up to you and they look up to other NFL players as idols. They want to become what you are. They strive very hard on the football field to get out there and give it 110% <clears throat> because they want to be what you are. And you have just taught those kids a wrong lesson. Some of those kids are going to watch this video. That's what I'm putting it together for. I hope they learned the right lesson out of it. And the right lesson is, is you, need to, you need to speak and think about what you're going to do or what you're going to say if you ever get into a position like you are, Colin, where what you say and do affects millions. Millions of people, adults and kids, old farts, it affects everybody when you make a statement like you made. And a lot of it, it affects negatively. And a lot of them may not even live to see their next age, their next birthday. You never know, but I can tell you this. If it gets really stupid out there, there's a there's a little over a million veterans or so around the country nationwide and people like myself and Sergeant Newsom and Colonel Graves and Major Graves and Major Saraga and Sergeant First Class Cobb and Sergeant First Class Villalba. Those guys and myself and the ladies too. Let's not forget the ladies. A lot of good women veterans out there. We'll all be standing up. Trying to put down something that we all wish nothing would ever happen or be seen in our lifetime. So until next time folks, this has been Rex with another edition of From a Veteran's Point of View.
Yeah, I had to come back one more time, folks. Especially after watching this last bit of footage I, I did last year for a program called Wreaths Across America. People buy a wreath. They have it laid on a veteran's grave at Christmas time as a f form of respect, as a way of saying thank you for your service. So I was talking earlier about what Mr. Kaepernick might be able to do to rectify the problem he's got. Maybe it would be worth your time, Colin, to buy enough wreaths to cover the veterans' graves in Dayton National Cemetery. Then you might want to get up on national TV and tell the world what you did and your purpose for behind it and apologize to those patriots that died to give you the right to say what you said, to give you the right to do what you do and maybe just maybe what you say will sink into some of these young people's brains that are going to watch all these videos and maybe they'll get the point and you might rectify you might fix some of that so now I'm finally going to leave you with that thought this has been Rex at the Buckeye Nest have a good day